Do antidepressants work well enough to justify their use, given increasing concern about the frequency of severe withdrawal symptoms that can occur when antidepressants are stopped? Hi, Jim Phelps here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In the last quick take, I reviewed the PANDA study, the largest study of antidepressants not sponsored by a pharmaceutical company. There, sertraline was not superior to placebo for depression symptoms in a large primary care sample, but there were some positive findings. Anxiety improved, at least statistically. And overall, multiple meta-analyses have found antidepressants statistically superior to placebo for major depression, with an effect size of 0.3. How big a benefit is this? An effect size of 0.3 may be statistically significant, but is it clinically significant? Here's a paper that may help with that question. Doctors Hengartner and Plodural present, quote, minimal clinically important differences, close quote, for common measures of depression. Remember, the question is whether antidepressants are associated with clinically meaningful improvement. Take the Hamilton Depression Scale, the HAMD. The common version has 17 items, each scored 0 to 4 by a clinician with a maximum of 51 points, a total score of 0 to 7 is generally regarded as not depressed, 8 to 16 as mild depression, 17 to 23 as moderate, and over 24, severe depression. So, how big a decrease in HAMD scores would you actually notice when a patient comes back to see you, say, four to six weeks after starting an antidepressant? How big a change would be big enough to suggest continuing that antidepressant, for example? That change is referred to as the MCID, the minimal clinically important difference. That's the smallest difference in a score that would mandate a change in patient management. According to Hengartner and Pludero, for the HAMD, that minimal clinically important difference for the HAMD is three to five points. You'll see the implications of that number in a moment when we compare it to the average decrease in HAMD scores seen in randomized trials of antidepressants. The point of Hengartner and Plodural's paper is to present the data behind that minimal clinically important difference. Where did that figure of three to five points come from? Was it fairly established? A very brief look then at their analysis. Estimates of MCID have been produced several different ways, each somewhat different in how clinicians and patients' impressions are weighted, whether the comparison is between patients or within a patient, meaning change over time, and whether statistical distributions, like the standard deviations of the measure, for example, are incorporated. And yet, interestingly, and it's Hengartner and Plodero's main point, all the different methods produce very similar MCID values. For HAMD, for example, it's that 3 to 5 range I mentioned a moment ago. Which brings us to the punchline, the real reason why Hengartner and Plodero wrote this paper in the first place. If the minimal clinically important difference on the HAMD is 3 to 5 points, how big a decrease can be expected from an antidepressant on average? And the answer the meta-analytically derived mean HAMD reduction associated with antidepressants is two points. By this analysis, then, antidepressants do not, on average, produce meaningful clinically important differences. Not that this will resolve the controversy about the benefit-risk ratio of antidepressants, but anyone who prescribes antidepressants should be following this debate. And if you're struggling with Hengartner and Plodero's very negative conclusion regarding the efficacy of antidepressants, make sure to understand this paper. It's not the final word, but it's an important one.